There are many methods to help us to create middleware components. In this video, let's learn to use the app.use method to create middleware components. With the app.use method, we can create a regular middleware component or a terminal middleware component. Let's jump into Visual Studio and start creating a web application with middleware pipeline. Let's launch Visual Studio and let's scroll down over here to create a new project. Again, I'm going to just search ASP.NET Core. And after that, I'm going to scroll down until I see ASP.NET Core empty. And let's use this project template. Click on Next button. And here, I'm going to say Learn Middleware for the project. I'm again going to call it Web App and click on the Next button. Framework. We'll continue to use .NET 9 preview version for you. It could be just .NET 9 if after November, .NET 9 is already released. I'm using release candidate 1, and I'm going to uncheck HTTPS. We're going to add HTTPS later. Now we can click on the Create button, and let's close this tab. We don't need it. And let's go to Solution Explorer over here. Unfortunately, we created F Sharp. We're supposed to use C sharp. So we have to do it again. Close solution. Try to create it again. And we search ASP.NET Core. Scroll down to here. Now it says C sharp, but I don't know why it, we use F sharp at the end. So learn pipeline. And I'm going to call it web app again. Click on next and check this. Now we have program.cs. Okay, let's go to program.cs. And we're familiar with this four lines of code. So in order to create a middleware, we're going to use line number four. Okay, and we're going to say app.use. We have used app.run before. App.run, we are going to talk about app.run later. For this video, we're going to use app.use. This app.use also takes a delegate, but as you can see, it takes a delegate with two different parameters. The first one is the context object, the HTTP context. And the next one is actually the delegate that can help us to trigger the next middleware. So it goes like this. If we hover the mouse over the first one, you can see the type of the first one is HTTP context. And we hover the mouse over the next parameter, it's of the type request delegate. Now, of course, this way of creating the Lambda expression, we omitted the type. If you want to add it, add a type, you can add it right here, just like this. So this app.use method is helping us to create our first middleware. So inside this app.use, we're creating our logic inside the, the first middleware. And for demonstration purpose, I'm going to just say context.response.write. So you're familiar with this. And we are going to say middleware one. So middleware number one. And this is before, right? And then again, this is write async, right? So in order to call it well, with the await keyword so that we can continue after the right async properly, we have to use the async keyword. And then we can use await. So this way, the code after this is a continuation of the async method here. Otherwise, without the await keyword, this is going to run asynchronously. So which means that potentially the next line could run first. So we don't want that to happen. This, we want this write async to happen before the next middleware is triggered. So now we can trigger the next middleware by just calling the next delegate. And next delegate requires one parameter, which is the context. Here you see how we forward the context object to the next middleware component. So very easy, we just forward this. And the next method is actually a async method. So therefore, we're going to use await. And now, once we finish this, 
was a weak keyword. The rest is again a continuation of this async method. So in order to do something here, we're going to simply write out some text again. So this is after calling. So you see that this is a middleware. The use is helping us to create this middleware. So this middleware is essentially a function that triggers the next middleware's function. Therefore, before we trigger the function, we can do some processing. And after we trigger that function, we can do some finalizing processing too, right? So of course, before we trigger the next middleware, our processing is purely based on the context object that is passed into this middleware. After we trigger this next middleware, our processing can be based on the context object again, but this context object is most likely already modified by the rest of the middleware already. Okay, so we have some more information in the context object. Of course, I'm not showing in this code. I'm simply just writing out the async, but it's very likely that our next middleware or the next one or the next one Right. Basically, the rest of the middleware component could have already modified the context object. And therefore, our logic after triggering the middleware here can be based on those modifications in the context object. Okay, so this is our first middleware. So let's have some comments here. I'm going to say this is middleware number one. And then we can have, let's add another two middlewares middleware components here. So this is middleware number two, and this is before calling middleware number two, and this is after calling middleware number two. Uh, and we're going to paste this again. I'm going to create the third one. So middleware number three, and this is before calling middleware number three, and this is after calling number three. Okay, so let's run our application in debug mode and let's see how this works well before we run this i have to emphasize again this code right code over here let me minimize this these lines of code are not actually run in sequence this is run first this is run secondly but these codes represents the code for creating middlewares and these codes well i have to say that the Lambda expression inside will not run, will not be executed until requests are received. So it's going to run, but the Lambda expression will only be executed when requests are received. Right here, we just basically run the Kestro server as well as the web application and listen for the request to come in. As soon as the request comes in, then the request will be forwarded into the middleware components inside one by one by one in this particular pipeline everything is connected right there's no terminal uh, middleware we didn't create a terminal middleware so requests will be uh, forwarded into the first middleware and then the second middleware and the third middleware and then it returns back so that's our expectation let's set a breakpoint inside here inside of our first middleware the second middleware and the third middleware. Also, let's set a breakpoint over here. And then let's run our application. As you can see, our first breakpoint that is triggered is app.run. So as I mentioned, these lines of code, right, inside the Lambda expression will only be triggered when we receive a request. At this moment, we haven't received a request, therefore app.run will run first. That's why I put a breakpoint here, right? Let's actually remove the breakpoint and just run normally. Now the first Lambda expression is triggered. That's because the browser is launched and a request is sent to the server. And if I just step over this, now you can see that we're going to trigger the next middleware. And if I go here, you see, we jump into the next middleware before we go to the next line, right? We jumped into here and then we're going to trigger this. And now we're going to trigger the next middleware, which is middleware number three. So F10 again, 
and we go into middleware number three. And well, we don't have the next middleware anymore, right? So the next middleware is not there. Therefore, nothing is going to be triggered. Uh, here, it's going to execute a write to the response. And then this library expression is going to be finished. So once it's finished, guess is where it's going to return. It's going to return back to the previous function where this function is actually called. Let's do F10 again. You see, it comes to line number 22. And this is middleware number two. We just finished calling this function. That's why this line is triggered now. So I'm going to do this. And then it's going to return back to middleware number one. It's going to go to this line because we just finished calling the next function, right? And then we're going to click on this continue button. Now, of course, we're going to come in as the second request, which is the favorite icon. So we can ignore this. We don't need to worry about the favorite icon thing. Let's continue and removing all of these breakpoints. And let's observe the result. So we have all of these results all connect together. So it's not very, it's not very clear. So let's actually add line breaks over here and let's run it again without debug this time. All right. So you can see that we have first middleware before calling next. And then next is called. So therefore second middleware is executed, right? And then third middleware executed. And after the last middleware, which is the third middleware executes. There's no next middleware anymore. Therefore, you see this, right? And then it returns back to the second middleware. Therefore, you see this. And then you see this. And then after that, it returns to the Castro server. Castro server forwards that response to this browser. Therefore, you can see the output right here. So we have used the app.use method and created three different middlewares middleware one, two, and three. And all three of them are regular middlewares, which means that one middleware will forward the context object to the next one and then to the next one. So these are all regular middlewares. But app.use method can actually also create terminal middleware. For example, if we want to make middleware number two a terminal middleware, which means that we are going to short circuit the pipeline. We can simply just comment out this line. When we comment out this line, it just means that we don't want to call the next middleware anymore. And this short circuits the pipeline. And that makes middleware number two a terminal middleware. Now we can do it this way by just avoid calling the next request delegate. At this point, I just want to mention that if you want to create a middleware with the use method, but if you don't want to use the type, like you can do this, right? You can do this, do it this way. There's no compilation error. However, when you do it this way, you will have to call the next delegate. So if I just comment out this, you can see the right squiggly line. So if you want to create a terminal middleware without calling the next method, the next delegate, then you should specify the parameter type here, okay, just like this. And then you just avoid calling next delegate and everything will return from middleware number two, right? Uh, middleware number two will return back to middleware number one, and then everything goes back to the Castro server. All right, let's give it a try and see what happens if we do it this way. Right? We short circuit the pipeline from middleware number two. Let's run the application without the debug. And we should be able to see a different response browser. Okay, let's see. So we have middleware number one before calling, middleware number two before calling. And then because we are not forwarding that to the next middleware, which is middleware number three, Therefore, we don't see middleware number three on the browser. We see the after calling of middleware number two, and then it goes to middleware number one. So this is how you can create a terminal middleware with the use method. Just avoid calling the next delegate. 
and just remember to specify the type of the parameter. All right, that is basically what I want to show you in this video. Just remember that the middleware is actually implemented by functions, and in these middlewares, they're implemented by lambda expressions. You can definitely create a separate function and call it within here, you know, separate function that takes these two type of parameters as parameters, and then you can just use it directly inside the use method. But here we're using inline lambda expression for creating a middleware. And you also observed how the middleware are calling the next one, the next one, and then it returns back, right? Just like function calls, right? So this function calls then this function, and then the second function calls the third function. And when the third function returns, it returns back to the second function. And when the second function returns, it returns back to the first function. So this is how the middlewares are connected together. And also, you have seen how we create a short circuiting middleware. It's also called terminal middleware by just avoid calling the next delegate. All right, that's everything I want to show you in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.